One of the men convicted in the mass shooting at a St. Paul bar back in 2021 was sentenced this morning. Devondre Phillips learned what his fate will be for his role in the shooting that killed 27 year old Markeisha Wiley and injured 14 others. Here's a look inside his sentencing hearing. Our family is an extremely forgiving family. We are realistic and know no one is perfect. We know Phillips did not directly shoot Kiki, but his actions caused her death. One of the hardest things about sitting in the trial was watching the zero remorse from Phillips, watching him smirk each and every day. It was heartbreaking to even see his attorney laugh as he did parts of his closing statement. It is clear that night was a joke to Phillips. He has zero remorse and clearly does not care about our daughter being murdered nor anyone else injured that night. That is what our family will never be able to forgive. Because all parties involved chose not to act as a reasonable person would, our family is left to only dream of what the missing pieces of our Kiki's life could have been. We are left to celebrate holidays, birthdays, and special events that she loved so much without her. Because holidays meant so much to her, our family asked that Phillips be given a long enough sentence in which he will be forced to sit and think of Kiki and all of the, all of the victims on each and every holiday for a very, very, very long time. Our family and all of the victims will no longer be able to celebrate holidays in the same way we did prior to this horrifying nightmare that has been taken away from all of us forever. Phillips was alone when Brown showed up with a group, a clear aggravating factor on the part of Brown. They were all armed to surround him. Mr. Phillips shot only enough to defend himself against Mr. Brown. There were five rounds remaining in his magazine when he dragged his shattered leg across the threshold of that bar. In contrast, Terry Brown's gun had no bullets left. He kept shooting into the crowd until the gun went click. Mr. Phillips, unlike Mr. Brown, has a criminal history score of zero. No one else in what defense has, ex has submitted as exhibit, uh, I don't have the exhibit number, Yarner, but the, uh, the state submitted exhibit of all defendants from over the course of five years, from 2015 through 2020, who received sentences for attempted murder. And among none of those uh, was there a situation uh, where a person with a criminal history score of zero received a consecutive sentence, with one exception. And that was an individual who uh, showed up to murder the new lover of his recently ex-wife um, and wouldn't let them leave while they bled out. These are substantial, significant circumstances. Mr. Phillips was defending himself irresponsibly. That's true. It was irresponsible. He should not have shot into a crowded bar. And he remains accountable for the injuries he caused, including the collateral accountability uh, and the shame and guilt he feels over the injuries caused by Mr. Brown. But for his sentencing, I ask you to consider the caution of the State v. Johnson court in 2008, which said allowing permissive consecutive sentencing for attempts would tend to negate the policy favoring significantly reduced penalties for attempted crimes compared to those for the completed offense. Out of all the cases cited by defense in that memorandum, none of them are similar. Um, none of them have 13 innocent victims, eight of which Mr. Phillips was convicted of shooting. Um, a lot of them were, a number of them were one victim with multiple counts. Some of them two victims, multiple counts. Um, but in this situation, defense, I don't think they argued for it in this situation, but they filed the motion for a dispositional departure, um, noting that Mr. Phillips is amenable to probation. I don't think that's true whatsoever. I don't know if counsel really touched on that. But the memo and the concept started with his lack of criminal history. And it negated going back to the juvenile situations of Mr. Phillips with a gun. 
2008 aggravated robbery juvenile adjudication, another attempted aggravated robbery in the first degree juvenile adjudication with a gun. Then he moves to Nevada to flee trouble and problems. And as noted in the PSI, shortly before this incident, he's charged and is still pending with domestic battery in Nevada. He's charged and still pending with four counts of child abuse. And he's charged and still pending with burglary of a dwelling with a gun. And he comes to Minnesota, gets off a plane, and within an hour goes to a parking lot to buy a gun. Based on Mr. Phillips' conduct and his actions, it's the state's request that at minimum the court looks at sentencing three of these consecutively, running the remaining concurrent with middle-of-the-box guidelines, which, result, which would result in a sentence of 459 months. Um, his conduct is serious. It is appropriate to sentence these cases consecutively to, to make some sense of this reckless tragedy and Mr. Phillips' complete disregard for the safety of everyone else. He didn't have to put himself in that position. He didn't have to shoot Jeffrey Hoffman to start this shootout. He could have made a better choice. 13 other people at that bar who have nothing to do with Terry Brown or Devondre Phillips wish he had made a better choice, but he didn't. And for that, I ask you to sentence him accordingly.